Hey everyone, I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And today I want to talk about this beast right here. It's the Blue Eddy EB150 1500 watt hour portable power station, solar generator, battery pack, so many different things you can call it. I've had this thing for three weeks now and it's pretty awesome. It's probably a little overkill. If you are, you know, a weekend overlander, car camper, um, you know, type of deal, 1500 watts is probably more than you're gonna need for a weekend. If you're a long-term overlander or camper and spend, you know, a week off the grid, this thing will come in really handy. Where I think these things really shine is in, you know, home preparedness. What are you gonna do when the power goes out? What are you going to do if some catastrophe happens and you know, you're without power in your home for an extended period of time? These things can do a really good job of keeping you know, the key things in your house running for an adequate period of time. If you've seen my channel, I did a review about a month ago um, on the Jackery 1000 and used that one to compare you know, how long would it run a refrigerator, um, what other appliances could it run? Checked a waffle iron, checked your blender, a toaster oven, um, checked uh, a, a griddle for like, you know, pancakes, that sort of thing, and ran all of those without a problem. And I have no doubt since this one is higher powered than the Jackery and has a very similar inverter in it, that this will do the same thing. But just for fun, I walked back through the house and tested some things that I didn't check with the Jackery. So will it run a pressure cooker? Yes, it will. Pressure cooker is currently pulling 830 watts. And with 1500 watts of power, you'll be able to cook something for well over an hour, which shouldn't be a problem. So if you need to, you know, make a pot roast at camp, there you go. Take this with you, you're good to go. So what if the power goes out? and you are just absolutely craving some french fries or some fried fish or some hush puppies something else to cook in a little deep fryer will it do it the answer is yes the deep fryer is currently pulling just over a thousand watts and it's been doing that now for several minutes and the eb150 has not uh, has not tripped so and the the wattage is currently oh it's smoking It's settling in at about a thousand watts, thousand ten. It'll hold it. It's good for it. Well, I decided to see in the case of a power outage, and if you just had to have something done on your work computer, or in this case, an iMac, um, would it run it and, and for how long? And so far, I've had this thing fully booted up, just launched Adobe Premiere, and it's hanging between 90 and 100 watts. So I could get a good 12, 15 hours, probably 12 hours worth of work time on this. I'm curious if I play a video, does it spike? Let's see. All right, it spikes up to about 130, 150 for video playback. It's not horrible. Still, I can get a lot done on this. Good to know. So the EB150 is super helpful if you happen to lose power. Let's walk through the specs of this and then we're gonna compare it to the Jackery. But it is a 1500 watt hour power station. It has a 1000 watt pure sign inverter inside it with a peak of 1200 watts. On the front, you've got a DC 12 volt output for running a fridge um, in your vehicle or you know other things like that you've got the input you've got four usb a ports you've got one 45 watt usb c port and then of course you have the display and as we swing this beast around back this is where your two ac ports are located so let's do a little comparison here this 
is the Jackery 1000. And you may be saying, Matt, why are you comparing the Jackery 1000 to an EB150 that's 1000 watts versus 1500 watts when Jackery just came out with the Jackery 1500 that's maybe a little more apples to apples? But is it? Because the reason that I'm comparing these two is because they're the same price. Jackery currently has this one for $9.99 and this one is $12.99 on Blue Eddie's website, but there's a coupon code to get you $300 off, making this one also $9.99. So if you've got a thousand bucks to spend and want to get one of these power stations, which one's the best buy? Well, I'm going to put little scores right up here with the Jackery versus the EB150, and let's see who wins. So let's start out with the obvious. The Jackery, its battery is rated at 1,002 watt hours. EB150, 1,500 watt hours. Obviously, a victory for the Blue Eddy. We've already discussed price, so 9.99 for both. We're just going to call that a tie and not even count that. Um, the inverter on these, both of them have a 1,000 watt pure sign inverter. However, the Jackery does have a peak of 2000 watts, where the Blue Eddy EB150 has a peak of 1200 watts. So in that regard, the Jackery does get a point over the Blue Eddy. I will do a disclaimer, in all of my testing, the fact that it has a peak of 2000 watts, I mean, that's great, but it's the ability to sustain wattage that's the deal. And just because this thing can peak at 2000 watts, you're not going to be able to sustain that. So if you've got something with an initial ramp, like maybe, you know, a compressor starting or an initial startup on, you know, some power tool or something, this one may, you know, allow that to peak and then come back down. But it, if any of these get much over a thousand watts, they're going to error out. So still giving the point to the Jackery, even though I'm not sure it's that big of a deal. Let's talk about the form factor of the two, because as you can see, they're very different. This looks just like every other Jackery that they've made. Um, I, the 500, the 300, this is just a much bigger version than that. Um, all the outputs and inputs are right here on the front. I do very much like that. The Blue Eddy has the DC and inputs here on the front. They do put the AC ports on the back. That doesn't really bother me. Um, the fan is here in the back. The Jackery's fans are here on the side. Honestly, I like this form factor better. I like that it's narrow and this is, this is personal opinion. So you can, you know, disregard this if you, if you don't, but I like how narrow and, and boxy this is. So if you've got, you know, just a narrow space in your rig or maybe a closet or something, this fits in there really nicely. They both have handles that, you know, don't allow you to stack anything on top of it, but I just like how how narrow and, and, and this one is. Whereas the Jackery is more boxy and you know, I, I just, I like this form factor better. Um, I think it's, I think it's a little more useful for, for storage and you know, tucking it in a rig or something. So let's talk about the USB ports. The Blue Eddy gives you five. The Jackery, it gives you four. The Blue Eddy has five USB-A. This one has two USB-A, two USB-Cs. This one has one USB-C, but I think five USB ports trumps four USB ports. So point to Blue Eddy. Let's talk about that USB-C port because that's a big deal. USB-C is, is crazy awesome. And the Jackery's is only rated at 18 Watts. That's not good at all when there's current power stations that can deliver up to hundred Watts. And if you've got like a, a MacBook Pro or some other laptop, you're going to need at least 45 Watts to really power it and, and charge it while you're using it. And the Blue Eddy comes with a 45 Watt PD USB-C port. So another point for the Blue Eddy. Well, let's talk about the weight. This thing is a 1500 Watt hour battery where this one is a thousand. So obviously this one is going to weigh more. The Jackery comes in at 22 pounds. And I like the, the handles for these. You could, you could get a decent workout. Um, the Blue Eddy comes in at a very hefty 38 pounds. I mean, it's, it's, it's a doozy. It's a big boy, but would you go away?
go away. Ignore her. Anyway, so yeah, Blue Eddy, definitely on the heftier side because it's got 50% more, more, more battery capability. So point to the Jackery for weight. What about warranty? I mean, these things, uh, you know, what, what if something happens to them? Jackery comes with a standard to your warranty. The Blue Eddy also comes with a standard to your warranty. However, the Jackery does give you the ability to register your product and extend your warranty by another year. So if you register it, you can get a three hour warranty out of the Jackery. So we'll give another point to the Jackery. Let's talk about charging. Both of these come with some pretty hefty power banks. In fact, in the box with the Blue Eddy, you get this massive brick that delivers 200 watts of power. Um, you also get a solar adapter. So yay for that. But both of these come with very hefty um, power chargers plugged into a wall. They'll both charge in about eight hours, seven to eight hours. Um, so tie there. When it comes to car charging, can you plug them into you know, your 12 volt output in your vehicle to keep them charged? The Jackery, yes, but it says it takes 14 hours to charge this in a vehicle, which is better than nothing, which unfortunately is what the EB150 has. I've tried using other adapters. I've got the Blue Eddy um, AC50S. I've tried that adapter and it just, it doesn't accept the input from a car adapter um, for whatever reason. So that's kind of a bummer with the Blue Eddy. If you yeah, you know, need to be recharging this on the go. Um, you know, it's gonna take it's gonna take forever on the Jackery, but it, at least it, it can do that. Um, but let's talk solar because if you're gonna be off the grid for a while, you're gonna want to be able to recharge these with solar. And well, watch this. All right, let's see how both of these units do with solar. I've got the new Blue Yeti 200 watt solar panels. So I've got two of them for a total of 400 watts. I'm curious how much power these two can take. I'm gonna start with just one because I don't think the Jackery can handle both. The most you can get with the Jackery from Jackery is two 100 watt panels. So I don't think it's gonna handle two 200 watt panels. And if I'm gonna use 200 watts, I'd rather have one one 200 watt panel didn't have to deal with two 100 watt panels. So let's see how these do with just one panel using the panel in the back. The EV150, seeing 153, 154, 155. 155 watts. All right, it's settling in 155, 156 watts. Out of a 200 watt panel, not too bad. Let's check the Jackery now. Jackery's at 122, 123, 120. Bouncing around about 120 watts. And that's not surprising. I didn't think the Jackery could take a full 200 watts. So for 200 watts, the EB150 is the clear winner there for solar charging. Now let's connect these two solar panels together and see what happens. If we can pump in 400 watts into either one of these. All right, the EB150's taking it. It's at 300 and climbing. It looks about 302, 303. I did test this about 10 minutes ago. I don't know what the difference is. Looks like there may be some very faint wispy clouds but a few minutes ago, this was pumping in 350 watts into this. 
will the Jackery take this at all? Jackery won't even accept that much power, which is what I suspected, but I uh, was hoping it might get a little bit more than 130-ish watts input. So the EB150, clear winner in the solar category as far as solar charging, even though the Jackery does include the Anderson port, which is a nice little touch, but really irrelevant. Um, because the EB150 will accept 500 watts of solar input. I only had up to 400 watts with so a perfectly sunny day and was getting 350 to 380 on that one um, with, the, with the two 200 watt panels. This one was only getting 120 something watts from one 200 watt panel and wouldn't take the two panels hooked up together at all because this one only accepts 163 watts. 500 watts versus 163 watts, no competition. When it comes to solar charging, this one's the winner. Now, I know a lot of you that watch this channel, I mean, you're off-roaders, overlanders, love being in the outdoors, car campers, that sort of thing. And you know, one of the reasons we buy these is to power the fridges when we're parked at camp so we don't have to risk running the battery down. Um, I have tested both of these under the exact same conditions in the house and if you remember from the Jackery video, this one powered the Dometic CFX 355 AM for 93 hours and 39 minutes. Not bad, almost four full days. Did the exact same test on this and it powered the Dometic for 118 hours and 45 minutes, almost five full days. So depending on how long you're gonna be off grid, this one obviously gives you more power to spare and can you know be charging other things like your you know your camera batteries, your drone batteries, um, all that sort of stuff. So clear winner to the Blue Eddy. Let's talk about the display. Um, if you saw my other Blue Eddy uh, AC50S review, that was one of the things that I don't like about the Blue Eddies is the display. It does give you the input and it gives you the outputs for both AC and DC, so yay for that. But the battery meter here is just the five bars. So you just have a relative idea of how much power is, is left to either charge or be used. Um, you know, 80 to 100, 60 to 80, 40 to, to 60, you get it. Um, so it didn't have a lot of detail on there and I wish it did. And that's where the Jackery definitely beats it because the display on this gives you the same inputs and outputs with the same bar but also gives you that just that little 62 percent right there um, which is just really handy to know exactly how much power you have left so yay for that we're going to give jackery point for the display um, over the blue eddy one thing a lot of people ask is how long are these going to last because if you're going to fork out a thousand dollars for a power station how long is that going to last? Well, the Jackery is rated at 500 cycles and that's to 80%. So after 500 cycles, your battery maxes out at 80% capacity. So there's still a lot of life left in it, but after 500 cycles, you're going to lose capacity. It's not going to be dead by any means, but you're just going to lose capacity. The EB150, 2,500 cycles. That's incredible it's going to take 25 discharges and recharges for this thing to hit the 80 percent capacity that's crazy so 500 2500 no competition point to blue yeti so which one is the winner obviously it's going to depend on some of your needs you may like this form factor better than this form factor the thousand watt inverter with the peak of 2000 may be more important to you than the thousand watt 1200 peak of this one um, you know, a lot of this is subjected, but to me, I think it's clear this one came down to seven points and this one ended up with five points for a thousand dollars. The EB 150 hands down trumps the Jackery 1000. And I really like the Jackery 1000, but 
If I had to give one of them up and just keep one of them, I'm keeping this. So in the end, you know, if I have a thousand dollars and want to buy something with this much power, my money's going to Blue Yeti. There's just no way you can get around the fact that 1500 watts for the same money as a thousand watts is pretty incredible. Yeah, some of the other stuff I can I can deal with the inverter, the display. Um, yeah, I, I love the form factor. 45 watt USB C port versus 18 watts. This one wins in my book. So I, I hope this was helpful. Um, if you're like me and you've got a thousand dollars to spend and, and are looking at, at one of these power stations, you you put a lot of research into it and you want to make sure you're getting the best bang for the buck and spending your money wisely. So I hope this was helpful. Um, if you you know, let me know which one do you like better? Which one do you think is, is the better buy? Um, if you have any questions about them, put them in the comments. Um, there's links to both of these. Ultimately, it's, it's your money. And so you get to decide where you want to spend it. And so there's links to both of these in the description. There's the coupon code for the EV150 to get that down to that $9.99 price tag. And I hope this was helpful. If you would like the video, subscribe. I've got more of these battery power station reviews coming up of different sizes and different brands. Um, got some cool stuff um, that, that's coming out. Um, and I mean, if you watch our channel, you know, we're primarily an overlanding off-roading channel and, you know, camping and living off the grid is, um, is one of our, our goals in the next few years. So if you really like the channel and are interested in, in supporting that dream of doing this full time and just doing nothing but going to amazing places, living our best life and creating hopefully amazing content for you to enjoy, um, you know, hit that Patreon link in the description and consider that. I'd really appreciate it. Um, that's also when we go on trips, how we share, you know, the, the GPS data and routes and waypoints and campsites that we find that sort of thing. So hopefully that will be helpful, but anyway, thanks so much for watching. Um, I'll see you next time. Bye.